Hey, good morning, Lower School. It's great to be with you all again this week for Chapel. Um, I wanted to talk to you today. We're going to continue talking a little bit about why we're rooted in this book right here, the Bible, where we're going to talk, continue to talk about that in general. But today I wanted to talk to you about the one time I got in real trouble when I was in school. Now, I know none of you have ever gotten in trouble at school, right? <laughs> Maybe once or twice. But in school, one time I got into real trouble, like sent to the principal, heavily punished sort of trouble. And it was all due to my French class. Now, the other day, my daughter Adeline came home from school and she started speaking to me in Spanish, which is awesome because she's learning Spanish here at school. And she started to talk about her grandmother and her grandfather in a language I didn't know. And I was like, what? What are you saying? And so if you know how to say grandmother or grandfather in Spanish, raise your hand real quick in your room. All right. And then everyone tell me, how do you say grandmother in Spanish? See if any of y'all remember. All right. And then go for grandfather. Say grandfather if you know how to say it. All right, so Adelina came home the other day, and that's what she said to me. She was talking about her grandparents, but in Spanish, I did not know, and it made me think back to this story. Now, let me kind of give some background to it. I took a, a language called French in high school, okay? My mom wanted me to learn French, even though I don't know. It's not very spoken here in the States very often. But my entire class went to France for three weeks together for over the summer, and when they came back, they were fluent. And if you don't know what fluent means, fluent means they could speak French perfectly. But I didn't get to go to France. My mom decided she didn't want to send me to France for three weeks. So I'd taken French for a couple of years. I was actually in my fourth year of France, France, French, um, when they all went. And I came back and took a fifth year of French with them because I was so intimidated if you don't know what intimidated means, it means I was so, they were so good at it. And I felt so bad at speaking French that over that school year, I started to get worse and worse and worse at speaking French. And about three quarters through the year, so about where we are right now, maybe a little after this, probably in March, I guess it was, it's like my brain stopped understanding French altogether. I don't know how to explain it. It's like emotionally, I just couldn't take it anymore. And the teacher called on me to read a passage in class. And I was so scared. Have you ever felt that way when your teacher calls on you and you know you don't know the answer? Well, I look down at my book and I'm scared because I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my friends. I don't want to be embarrassed by the people with the people I go to school. And I look down at what she wants me to read. And I look down at the book and there the first word is a learn a word you learned the first day of French class. The word is monsieur, and it means mister. That's all it means. It's like Mr. Suddeth. And you learn it literally the first day of school when you first take French class. I bet a lot of you know how to say mister in Spanish because you learn it really early. And I looked at it, and I knew what the word meant. But when you spell monsieur, it sounds different than it looks on paper. On paper, it looks like it says Monsieur. And especially if you're like me from Irmo, South Carolina, and you sound like a Southerner anyway, I looked down at that word and I said, Monsieur Jock. And the crap and the whole class laughed. Now, at first I was like, oh man, they're laughing at me. And then I realized they weren't laughing because they thought I was dumb or because I had made a mistake, they thought I was trying to be funny. And the teacher stops and she goes, Monsieur, Monsieur, no, 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 no. En français, say it incorrect, s'il vous plaît. Which is, no, 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 sir, say it correctly, say it correctly. And I said, Monsignor Jock. And she goes, oh, she rolls her eyes and she looks at me. And I'm like, oh, man. And then, but she thinks, she thinks I'm trying to be funny and the class is laughing again and she's losing control of her class and she says in French to me, I can't, I don't know how to say it anymore, but she essentially said to me, say it right this time. Do not try to be funny. And I looked at it and I can remember like literally shaking because I knew I had no clue how to say it. So I said, I, I got to say it how I said it before. Monsieur Jock. And she goes, 
bananas. She got so mad at me and kicked me out of class and sent me to the principal because she thought I was being rude. She thought I was being uh, just trying to mess with her. She thought I wasn't being kind. And because of that, I got sent down and I had to go explain to the principal and no one really believed me. They thought I was just not being a very nice kid at the time. And I got in some trouble for that. And I've always remembered that moment. Because I think a lot of you have felt that way before, where you're trying to understand something and you just don't understand it. Yes, in some ways this book is like that. The Bible is a very difficult book to understand at times. It takes a lot of learning and studying to understand what it means. Let me prove that to you. We'll do a little contest and I'll try to prove it to you, okay? Here's the contest. Here's what we're going to do. You ready? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question. And I'm going to awkwardly pause. I'll pretend like I'm frozen, okay? Like, I'm. here's a practice one. Are you ready? I'm going to pretend like I'm frozen. Did that work? Did you think I was frozen? I wasn't. I wasn't frozen at all. I was just messing with you. Um, but I'm going to freeze after I ask that question. And in that time, you can raise your hands. And teachers, you take some guesses. And we're going to see how well we know some of these random facts about the Bible. Some I think you might get right, and some you will not get right. Are you guys ready? Let's go with question number one. And then I'll pause and let you all talk. You ready? Here's question number one. Here we go. Question number one. How many different languages was the Bible written in? I'll give you a hint. It's more than one. The Bible was written in more than one language. How many different languages was it written in? All right, on your mark, get set, raise your hands and go, and I'll awkwardly pause. All right, I tried some faces out for that one. Sorry if I was distracting. All right, how many languages was the Bible written in? Anyone guess three? Because that is the correct answer. The Bible, in, when it was originally written, was actually written in three languages. Greek, Hebrew, and a language less used called, called Aramaic. And so the Bible was written, this book was written in three languages. And guess what? None of those languages are really spoken anymore. They're used and can be read and can be understood, but people don't walk around speaking Aramaic and the type of Greek they speak now, they don't speak anymore. So that's really strange and interesting. All right, second question, okay? The Bible was written by a lot of different people. They wrote different books of it. We're gonna start with the easiest or the tougher one, then we'll go to the easier one. How many different authors are there to books in the Bible? Right. How many different authors are there? So how many different people helped write the Bible? Your mark, get set, go. All right, let's see. How many guests got our guesses done? Maybe take one or two more. All right, how many authors of the Bible? There are... 40 different people that wrote books of the Bible. 40. And so this book was not just written by one person straight through. It was written by 40 different men over literally a period of thousands of years of history that it's covering. So that's a lot of stuff. Now this next one, hopefully you can get, okay? This next one, maybe you can get. And you bet maybe you've learned this in a Bible class somewhere. How many books are there in the Bible total, including old and New Testament. All right, I'm going to give you a minute to think. All right, I bet we've already heard the correct answer in a class somewhere. How many total books are in the Bible, Old and New Testament combined? The answer is 66. There are 39 Old Testament and 27 New Testament books. So it's written by 40 people over all these different books. Now, last question, and I don't think you have any chance to get this one right, because I definitely did not know this before I looked it up. This is totally random and something you don't need to know in life. I just kind of think it's funny. You ready? Last question. How many words are there in the Bible total? 
So how many, including I's and these and ands and gods and Jesus's and offerings and grain and Solomon and observed and all the other words I just looked at even just on this page right here. The whole book, how many words are there? All right. Take some time. Take some guesses. If anyone get this, gets this exactly right, I will come and especially, I don't know, think they're the Bible man or the Bible woman. So, all right. Take a minute. Go. All right, are we ready? Maybe take two more. All right, let's see how close. Let's see who, the, I wonder who the closest one in your class is. There are approximately, because it's right at it, 611,000 words in your English translation of the Bible. 611,000 words. Now, ask a question with me real quick here. Why am I telling you how many words are in the Bible? Why do you need to know how many authors there are? I want to make one point for you today, guys, and it's really just one point. This book is, was written in three languages by 40 different people over hundreds and hundreds of years. There's 611,000 words in here. But you know the craziest thing about it? It tells one story. It tells one story. Even though different people and different people put parts in, can you imagine in a class if I had everyone in a room sit down and say, write a story. And then somehow when we put all the stories together, they told one big story. That would be impossible unless somebody was guiding the story. See, this book, the story in it was guided by God to tell his story. The story of who he was and how great and perfect he was. To tell us who we are, and that we were made in his image, and that he loves us and wants a relationship with us. But to also remind us over and over that we're sinful, and because we mess up, we don't deserve a relationship with us. And the whole story built to this moment where God showed his love so much that he sent his son Jesus, who came and died for our sins so that we could have a relationship with him. And that one day he will come back. And for those of us who believe in him, he'll let us be with him forever. So this book, full of 611,000 words, written by 40 different authors, tells this amazing story of a loving God who's just and perfect and amazing, finding a way to be and ask for relationship with you. So today, as you go to your Bible classes, or as you're home and you pray, or as you have devotions at home as a family, what I want you to remember is this whole book is telling one story, and that's why we read it. That's why we get to know it, and that's why it's so important. Let me pray for us. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love us. Thank you for your story. Thank you that you came and showed yourself to this world and died for our sins. Father, thank you for this book. I pray you help us to learn to understand it, whether it's home or in our Bible classes. In your name I pray, amen. Hey, thanks for being with me today, everybody. I hope you all are having a great week, and we'll see you soon.